Welcome back to my channel all you odd historians. Today we'll be peering into the history of Korea's murder crown Prince Sato. So let's just get started. Born on the 13th of February 1735, he was the second son of the Korean King Yongjeon of Joseon. The birth of Sato brought King Yongjeon great joy since for years the king's wives and concubines had only given him daughters. Once born, Sato was set up with his own palace with an army of maids and servants. However, King Yongjong did not oversee his son's upbringing. The few times Yongjong met his son, he was highly irritable and easily displeased with his son. This caused Sato to develop fear and anxiety while desperately trying to please him. His relationship with his mother was not much better. To stay on Yongjong's good side, she was mostly concerned with following the king's rules, on raising the crown prince to the letter, and let any loving motherly relationship go to the wayside. Unfortunately, Sato grew up without a father figure feeling unloved and resentful. Many factors led to Sato becoming explosive, narcissistic, devoid of love and faith. His lack of affection and fatherly supervision as well as the indulgence by courtiers created a monster. Sato was prone to sudden and violent mood swings, and it was common for him to explode into violence, and many suspected that he was schizophrenic. It was commonplace for Sato to murder his servants, sometimes a few per day. He also liked raping and murdering concubines, and he soon became feared throughout Korea as a serial rapist, killer, and all-around psychopath. In 1757, King Yongjong's legal mother and wife died within a month of each other. Sato, who had been close to both of them, their deaths led to a marked deterioration in his mental and relationship with his father. As a way of dealing with his frustration and rage, Sato often beat his eunuchs, and in the same month as a burial, he walked into his chambers holding the severed head of a eunuch whom he had killed, forcing the ladies in waiting and his wife to view it. After this, he frequently killed palace staff to release his emotions as well as assaulting and raping. It has been recorded that Yang Zhang asked Sato why he was committing the crimes he had, to which Sato replied along the lines of, Because I'm in pain, you are my father but do not love me. He also began drinking heavily which was a serious breach of Korean society. By 1762, everyone in the palace, family, or servant was in danger. The body totals are unknown, but reports are there are multiple bodies that had to be carried away every day. Sato didn't even seem to know he was killing people, as he was in a semi-lucid state most of the time. Eventually, the King Yongjun could not allow his son to continue his ways, and on July 4th, 1762, Sato was declared the crown prince deposed. By court rules, the body of a royal could not be defiled. So as a solution, Yang John ordered Sato to climb into a wooden rice chest on a hot July day in 1762. According to Sato's wife's memoirs, Sato begged for his life before getting into the chest. After two days, King Yang John had the chest containing Sato tied with rope, covered with grass, and moved to the upper palace. Sato responded from inside the chest until the night of the seventh day. The chest was then opened and he was pronounced dead on the eighth day. Sato lasted for eight days in the chest with no food or water and died screaming for mercy. Young John then restored him to the position of crown prince. Prince Sato was reinstated 15 days after he died, but King Young John banned any mention of the prince's name for the rest of his reign. Thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next. Thank you.